What's going on, everybody? Today, it's your boy Cesar, by the way. It's your boy! Um, today, we're going to look at Pepe. We're going to look at Pepe coin. Pepe token. I don't know. It's just Pepe. Pepe USD. Um, I've, got, I've got it pulled up on the Poloniex chart because this chart has more historical data than any other chart that I could find for Pepe, um, which is why I chose it. Right now, I've got the ribbon pulled up because I was from my last video. I had it pulled up, and we are below the ribbon, which I think is something to note. On a four hourly time frame, we've got some gaps down here, and it looks like the ribbon is in a form of a firm bearish posturing. Um, I want to refresh this page so that I get all my, my indicators back and stuff, and we'll, we'll just go Pepe, USD, um, wherever Poloniex is. There you are, Pepe Poloniex, and we're on the weekly now. Um, and the, the reason I'm not on the weekly for Pepe, the reason why I haven't, that I'm probably not going to look at this is because there's just not enough iterations. There's not enough data. Um, so I don't, I don't find it useful personally. Um, we're, we're on the daily here. This has a little bit more meat to it. And I think the things to note, the obvious things to note in the price, we're just looking at the price, is that we've got high, higher high, or lower high, lower high, lower high, lower high. Every single pump that, that Pepe's had since it's all-time high has just been a nothing. It's been an absolute nothing. It's just been a pump that was then given back. Um, we can see that there's really no volume that's come in since about here, which is probably when Binance stopped buying coins for their listing. Um, you know, Binance did list on this day and there was a little bit of a spike of volume, but we haven't seen anything that close uh, to those levels in volume in a while. Volume is picking up now as we're moving down, um, which is not a good thing. These are some bearish looking candles and even more so the RSI has rejected the 50. I would say, man, it just keeps rejecting the 50. It went above it a little bit here. Um, you found support, you definitely battled for this line, but the last two times we went up there, we definitely rejected it. And that is not a good look. That that normally means that you are going to see oversold. It's very rare that you reject the 50 convincingly and you don't, you know, like this was a rejection, but it came back up. Okay, cool. But like rejecting it twice, I would be very surprised if we didn't see oversold zones. And by the way, that would bring Pepe to a new low. That'd be a lower low amidst lower highs after blowing up 10x, you know, like, let's see, like, how high did it go? A lot of people make the misconception, um, you know, that, that okay, so, so it pumped from low to high there, it pumped 20, what would that, I guess that'd be a 20x, right? 20x, 26x, um, that's not bad. Um, but a lot of people make the misconception that from, from high to low, we dropped 70, almost 78%. It can't go lower, man, it already dropped 78%. The dumps already happened. No, 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 no. No, 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 that's not how it works. Even from this current price, um, if we were to go back to previous areas of price, which is very common, that'd be an 83% drop. Just from, just from the current price, that's an 83% drop. If we went to the highs of this previous price action, that's still almost a 79% drop, or a 70% drop, almost a 70% drop. Um, it can and will go lower. Um, I don't have a whole lot to say on Pepe other than if you're in it, man, you know, you can pray and hope that one of these little pumps will happen. It probably will. You probably will get another pump. Um, but will it happen after Pepe's dropped below this low? You know, this pump here, this last pump we had from low to high, let's, let's just measure them real quick so you, you know what to expect. If you're holding out hopes, you don't want to sell Pepe here. 28% pump, 27% pump from the low to high. Let's just see. Um, and, you know, these are more around the, the opening period, so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do that. Opening period, 64% pump on that day. 32% pump on the actual day itself, actually. Um, and then this one here from opening to high was another 30% drop, or pump, 34, yeah. So if, and then let's see this one. Let's just see this one real quick from, from close. 24, about a 20% pump. So yeah, if you want to hang on for the potential of a 20% to a 30% pump, go ahead. But if Pepe drops down here and you get an opening day down, down like right here and that's where it pumps from, a 20% pump, by the way, is going to put us back to where price is now. A 30% pump might get you a little bit higher, but are you going to catch that? Are you actually going to sell when you see that pump? Or are you going to be so excited that, oh, I might get another chance. It might go up to new highs, just like every single pump here was. I, I'm not you know, here to tell anybody what to do. This is not financial advice. But if I was holding Pepe, if any of my family members were holding Pepe, I definitely would be scared. 
I would definitely be scared. And in fact, I'm scared for every person holding Pepe. This rejection, this double rejection off the 50 is not good. It's really not good. It's going to go into oversold zones. You're going to see a lower low than this. And that's only going to confirm that this was the top because we're seeing lower highs and lower lows. And we're probably, once we break this low, I mean, the only area of price that we have is like this, this little zone here. I'll show you, you know, from a low point to a high point, this is, this is all you got. And you're already below it. You're already in this price range. So if it drops below this low, is it going to just drop a little bit lower? Maybe. Is there a fib that we can base that off of, you know? Yeah. Like the one four, the, the one two seven twos right there, it could bounce off of that line. It definitely could. And then you get your little 30% pump that brings us right back to where it is. Um, maybe a 20% pump, maybe even more. Maybe it pumps up a little bit more, but it'll still be a lower high. And you'd have to pay attention to when it pumps because when it pumps, it sells off quickly. So you got to catch that quick. You'll miss the boat if you're not paying attention. Um, but truthfully, what I'm trying to get at is when we break this blue line, the only, only area of price action that we have to relate to is down here. It's all down here. And that again would bring us from a current price. That'd bring us a 70 to 83% drop, 69 and to 83% drop. Um, and fitting in with the fact that we'd be oversold when you get oversold, a lot of people are bullish, right? They're like, Oh, it's oversold time to buy. Generally, when you first get into oversold, you're not going to, to just pump right away. You're actually going to make lower lows in price and generate some bullish divergence, hopefully, or, or show strength in the RSI before, you know. Maybe you go even lower in the RSI. That's possible, too. But, but you get your strongest moves to the downside when you're oversold. So being oversold is not a good thing. It's really not a good thing. Ideally, yes, you want to buy in oversold conditions. Yes, you do. Um, but if we, I, I promise you, the day that we get oversold is the day that the real moves start to happen. Or, or maybe it's, they started to happen the day before, you know, but it's, it's around the time that the real moves start to happen. And uh, I can promise you on an asset that pumped 26%, a day that only went down 3% uh, uh, from, from the day before it went down 10%, these are not real moves. You, you'll see the real moves will be just like they were here. They're going to be dramatic. They're going to be to the upside. You're going to lose 20 to 40% Pepe in a day. Like maybe, maybe more. I mean, when it gets below this line, it's going to have a straight dump. It's going to be a straight dumpster, man. Um, I don't like Pepe. I, I like, I like Pepe as a coin. I would, I would definitely invest in it at lower prices. I think it's a great meme coin. Everybody in crypto likes, likes Pepe. You know, Pepe, if you've been in, if you've been in crypto. Um, but I, I don't like it as a, as a investment or as a buy right now. I would, I would stay away. I'd avoid it like the plague personally. Um, and if, if I was in it, I'd be getting the hell out of it. That's for sure. Um, so that's all I got on Pepe. Um, you know what? While we're while we're talking Pepe, let's let's talk Ethereum. Speaking of dumpster fires, everybody is so bullish on Ethereum, and I like Ethereum, man. I don't I don't hate any of these cryptos. I don't have any vendettas against any of these cryptos. You know, I'm I'm just not like most people where I have an absolute obsession and love for them. The only love that I have in crypto is Dogecoin. Um, I love Dogecoin, and I am bearish on Dogecoin. I'm definitely bearish on Dogecoin. I'm going to make a separate video for Dogecoin, but we're just going to tag Ethereum in this one. Why not? Um, so let's let's look at it, you know. Let's just see here. You know, honestly, I've got a lot to say on Ethereum. I might make another video on it. I don't know. Maybe not. Maybe not. Okay, well. Uh, I don't know. Ah, oh, man. <laughs> um, okay, anyways. While, while I'm deciding here, Ethereum has lower highs. It's got lower lows. It's in this like downward sloping kind of formation. It looks a lot like Bitcoin. It even has this bounce off of its 123 MA. It really looks a lot like Bitcoin. And you know, the two top cryptos performing like each other, that, that kind of makes sense in my opinion. Bounce off the 0.69 here directly off of it. Um, right here down to low, you know, again, wow, two direct bounces off the 0.69. Ethereum is actually the reason why I included this line. I remember I, I used to watch it go to the 0.7 all the time and I adjusted it to the 0.69 and I, I just cause it's funny, you know, whatever. Um, and it's, it actually is a more spiritual number, 0.69 than 0.7. It is a more spiritual number. There is energy and meanings behind that. Um, besides just the meanings that, that us degenerates give it. And we've had two rejections now off of that. That's, that's not necessarily a good thing. Um, truthfully, we rejected the 618. We got below it pretty quickly. Bouncing off the 382 is good. Um, but if we get below this 382, I would expect to see prices around the 618 at 1800, basically around 1800. And if and when that 618 breaks, we'll talk prices down to 1700 or maybe uh, $1,600 even. 
Um, truthfully, though, I, I think Ethereum's in it for the long haul. I do think it's going to have a big old dumpster fire. Um, we're going to see prices that are well below $500. Um, and I'm, I'm not exaggerating. I'm really not, you know, this isn't just because I'm bearish on Bitcoin. I'm, I'm bearish on most crypto right now. In fact, I don't know any cryptos that I'm bullish on. But if we took bottom here to high, um, oops, and we were to look at, you know, the 1618 right there is at $507. The 1272 is right below, it's at $690, at 69 again. Um, you know, and this this price I could see being more possible. There, there's really nothing here um, to find support on. I guess there was a close here, you know, that, that, but there's not really anything there to find support on. And this one, to me, the reason I'm, I have this one up, this isn't the significant one. I'll pull up the significant fib in a second, but, but this one is significant to watch in my opinion because in the short term, you're gonna see more significant things happen um, earlier. Um, you know, breaking this 236, breaking the 382 on this will be significant. And then really breaking this 618. Once once Ethereum breaks below $12,500, basically, um, or closes below this even on a monthly scale, it's on to these extensions. And the 1886 is down there at 400. Um, and it, it could go to the 1886, it could go lower than that even. But let's let's measure the actual FIB. The, the significant fib from low to high, most recent low to high, and look at look at how respected it is. Look at how significant it is. We've got got a little rejection here off the 0 0.069 level, um, literally right there. Ethereum loves the 6.9 man. It's ridiculous. Um, Finds support, holds it as support at the 3.82. It's beautiful. You know, right at the previous all-time high, of course, um, where where it closed at least. And then it found rejection off the 2.36, not once but twice. This is bad. This is very bad. Finding support here, that's great. That's, you know, it's, it looks bullish, honestly. This is a common, you know, and then you go up and we would be looking at the extensions uh, measuring down from here to here, you know, but we're not doing that. We're not looking at these extensions and why? That's because on this fib here that has these extensions that we would look for, bouncing off that 382, right? We are rejecting the 0.5. And when you reject the 0.5, we've rejected it twice. When you reject the 0.5, you get significant moves to follow. And that's why that's why at a minimum i would expect ethereum to go to 700 dollars um if not quite honestly lower than that um i would expect these extensions to be hit maybe 400 maybe lower but the main fib that i want to look at is this one right i want to look at the one that i just had pulled up this big one here from bottom to top previous cycle i guess this was the double bottom and then current cycles high um this rejection off the 236 to me implies that we are going to go below the 382 on this next pass down. We're not going to hold it as support. And generally what you look for, you could you could find support at the 0.5. It's totally possible. But generally when you break the 382, you look to the 618, which by the way is right at $410. And in classic Ethereum behavior, it wouldn't surprise me if the month closed at the 618, the month closed there. But just like we had, you know, it held the 382, but it had a wick below. It wouldn't surprise me if we had a wick below down to $300. It would not surprise me at all. And besides the, so, so that's that's the fib levels. You know, I do expect six, the 618 to hold. I would expect that to be the closing bottom or around there. You know, we've got some closings and opens here, closings and opens here. It kind of makes sense to me. Um, if we took from, from high to low here um, of this pattern, I mean... The 618 is pretty close to this 618. I don't know. Point. Five. It's this. This one wouldn't be in play anyway, so that's not really anything. I was just seeing if, if there's anything to line up with it. But uh, but you know this general area around four hundred dollars, definitely below five hundred dollars, um, would be an area that I expect to find support. And it wouldn't surprise me. It really wouldn't surprise me if the absolute bottom was right around three hundred and seven dollars, three hundred and six, give or take a dollar. Like it wouldn't surprise me because that's that's how Ethereum likes to uh, play it. That's literally what it likes to do. And, you know, maybe it doesn't. Maybe it just tips right off the 618. Maybe it doesn't even get there. Maybe it gets just above it and we front run it. There's a lot of buying pressure down here and it gets sent off to the moon from there. But it is going to go around this area. It will, in my opinion, Ethereum is, it's got a date with destiny below $500. Um, and, you know, if you were to put like, like a, a bar right here, you know, tipped right there, closed right there, found support right here, found resistance right here. This is kind of a nice bar. That's that's at just below three hundred dollars. That'd be a nice area to bounce. You know, this might be an area to, to to watch. And if that area got front ran, maybe gets front ran a little bit. You know, a little bit above, which is around three hundred dollars still. Even at this tip, even at this high, which I doubt we bounce off of this. I, I would believe that we go slightly below this. That's at three sixty three. So, um, 
you know, and we could bounce off of that, but but I, I wouldn't expect the month to close near into these prices. I think it would close higher than this, but it wouldn't surprise me if we wicked down to these prices on our final descent. Um, you know, Ethereum, before I'm done with this video, I do want to talk about how Ethereum itself had this uh, same zigzag pattern that I've talked about in Bitcoin. I, I believe it has had the same pattern. Maybe it hasn't. Nope. No, it hasn't. It followed it to a T, basically, up until wave five. So wave four went to the 618, or, or wave wave one down, wave two into the 618. That is a that is a prime example of a of a wave two, and then wave three down, right here, you know, came down to the 2618. That is that is perfect. That's exactly what you're looking for. So that's, you know, that's something to expect. And then wave four, wave four, this is not a good wave four. I mean, it went above the 50 already. And it's really long. It might be the longest wave if this was wave four. I don't. I don't think that was a wave four. So really, what I think we got going on is like a. I, I don't even know. I don't even know what to call it. I'm. I'm lost in the count. So. So I. I really don't know. It wouldn't surprise me if this was some kind of uh, A B C down, like a one two three, but. It doesn't match up with any counts. It's not. It's not anything that I recognize. If anybody knows Elliott Wave Theory and they, and they know what this is, they have an identity for it, leave a comment below. I'd, I'd like to know. Um, his Elliott Waves are really nice to have like a roadmap in, in what to expect. That's why I like FIBS so much, man. It, it's not that it, it's not a crystal ball. It doesn't tell you price will go exactly here, right? It's just a general area. It's like, it's, it's an expectation or, or a, just an area of expectation. I don't know. And it's really good whenever you're in price areas that just have, you, you have no clue where you could go. And when we're, we're at a top to bottom here, you know, when, whenever Ethereum looks like it wants to go up again, you know, we're, we're at new all time highs. We've never been here before. Um, it would be good to kind of know what to expect. You know, that's, that's why I like fibs. That's why Elliott wave theory uses fibs. It's all predictive. It's not, it's not a crystal ball. It's not a uh, prophecy. Anyways, um, on the weekly time frame, we did reject the 60 level, the bearish uh, or the bullish control zone. That's not good. Off this top here, we did have a bearish engulfing candle. That's not good. And, you know, I mean, right now, if we're to draw a fib, I mean, right now we're, we're holding the line, but I don't, I don't know if that's going to be uh, forever, if that's going to be a forever thing. So right now I am bearish on Ethereum. Let's look at Ethereum versus Bitcoin. Ethereum BTC before we, before we sign off here. Ethereum BTC. Um... Wow. Wow. This looks like a BART. This looks like a BART. Total BART pattern, man. You want to you want to see what a BART pattern is here? BART. I won't I'll, I'll explain it, you know, as we go through, but uh BART pattern. You know, BART Simpson. That's that's right. That's why they call it a BART. This is generally something that you see in like like moments of manipulation. You see it a lot in crypto cuz crypto operates 24/7. Um, I mean, just, just look at it, man. Like literally it looks, it looks just like, you know, you got your head, you got your wig wags, whatever, and then head down. I would expect, I would very much expect that we are going to have for Ethereum and, and this took weeks, this took one, two, three, four, five, six, seven weeks, you know, to top before it pittered around. Um, I, you know, it could take six weeks, it could take one week, it could take three months, you know, who knows, but it will be more or less a straight shot down, just as it was a straight shot up. And it, and it would not surprise me if the low to this before we started getting any kind of pop, it would probably be um, at least two, two Bitcoin, this would probably be around around here, the low to this would probably even go a little lower than this. So again, this isn't the price of Ethereum, this is the comparison of, of Ethereum to Bitcoin. Um, but if you're in Ethereum because you think that it's a better asset than Bitcoin right now, I would be scared. I would be scared. Um, it looks, it definitely looks like it wants to reject this 50. It looks like it's staying below the 50. That's not good on the weekly, on the daily time frame. Ooh, man, it's it's good readings on the RSI. Don't get me wrong, but at the same time, it's not because you've got you've got highs up here. You're basically like tied with this, but you're lower. It's like, it's, it's, it's almost, it's not quite there, but it's almost hidden bearish divergence. You're looking like you want to come up and reject this zone, just like you did before. Um, and the last time that happened, it was bad. The time before that it happened, it was bad. The time before that, that it happened, it was bad. And we're in that same kind of area right now. And we haven't seen a lot of uh, oversold price action. And this is the thing when you're showing strong readings in the, in the RSI like this, but you're not getting strong moves. 
you're not getting strong moves like this or like this, you know what I mean? Like this, cool, very strong. It looks great and you can see it in the price, it reflects it. But whenever you get strong readings in the RSI like this that, and you're not getting any move at all, this is just winding up, it's getting ready for the drop. That's, that's really what it is, in, in my opinion. Um, you can't get overbought, you haven't been overbought in a long time. Like this doesn't count, I wouldn't count that, you know? Um, you're being held down below this line. Let's see what you're at here. It's possible. You're holding it as support here. You are above the 50 right now, but you know you could go just above the 50 and then reject it as you have a couple times. I think, I truthfully think, you're in a, you're firmly in a downturn downtrend right now. We just haven't seen it play out because we're in this giant sideways pattern. But once it breaks, once you break out of this, um, like break this low down here at 0.62. I would expect that very quickly over the coming weeks. Ethereum, basically, when, when Bitcoin drops, Ethereum's just going to drop harder. That's that's all this is saying. Um, or if Bitcoin happens to pump, Ethereum won't pump as hard. But I don't think that's going to happen. Um, I think Ethereum is about to lose half its value against Bitcoin, which is ridiculous. Um, that's all I got. That's all I got. Let's see. You know what I mean? I can, I can pull up the chart one more time. Ethereum USD and just see... I mean, I'm I'm definitely bearish on this thing, man. This daily cross happens. I wonder what the uh, what the what the MX ribbon M MA ribbon moving average whatever the ribbon the exponential ribbon um, on the daily looks like it wants to cross up. You are finding support on it right now. That's that's not bad. You know, it's not completely bad. This actually looks way better than Bitcoin's, honestly. Um, but you know, there's eight hours, a little bit more than eight hours left in the day. If this closes below this, this would and that's not far away, you know, it's at 18,500, or 18,000, 1,859, if it went to 1,849, this would look bad, so it's, it's $10 away from being condemning, um, and it needs to close, it needs to close below this, you know, um, I don't know, Ethereum, it's known for these little fake outs too, you know, a little, little fake out right there, um, and then, you know, this was kind of a more real run, but still ultimately brought you to the downside. It's known for these. You know, this this one got really close too. So I wouldn't, if I was a bull, I would not be counting on this, even though it does at the moment look bullish. It could very soon and, and probably will turn bearish um, in, the, in the coming hours to days. Things are going to happen right now, guys. We're, we're literally right at the forefront of a, of a, of a bearish move. It's, it's about to happen. It's really about to happen. And Ethereum, Bitcoin's not safe. Ethereum's definitely not safe. And if both of those aren't safe, man, bye-bye Pepe. Bye-bye <laughs> bye bye every other crypto out there, honestly. Um, that's all I got for you guys. If you liked the video, leave a like, subscribe. Um, follow me on Twitter, at ChrisHarris85. That's my picture. At ChrisHarris85, that's me. Um... And if you want to follow me on TikTok, it's at ChrisHarris45. Um, I've got a different picture on there, but but if you look at the videos, it's, it's definitely me. Um, yeah, thank you all for coming. Thank you all for the new subscribers. I know I've got I've got like three or four new subscribers in the last like 10 days, so th thank you guys. Really appreciate it. To all my old subscribers, hell yeah. You guys are all my old subscribers. You know, if this, if this channel blows up, um, you, you guys are the OGs, and I really appreciate your support. I really, really do. It it makes my day, you know, to just see people liking and, and subscribing. It really makes my day, and um, to see the views going up and stuff like that. Um, I, I hope I'm doing something right. I hope I'm producing good content that you guys enjoy. You know, at, at the least, enjoy it. Um, if not, maybe you're, you're getting some education out of it. Um, this is not financial advice. Again, you know, this is just my opinion. I'm I'm a self-educated person on this matter, and I, you know, I'm I'm a chartist. I'm a technical analyst, and if you know the the, the way I like to kind of gear my videos is I, if if someone's wanting to learn technical analysis, they want to do TA. I want to try to explain it, and that might be why I over-explain things so much. But I want to explain it in a way that you can make sense out of it. Hopefully, I know I'm confusing at times, um, but I, I take my time to explain things every video. I don't normally just run through things because, you know, if, if you're learning, I, you know, I, I'd like to help you learn. Maybe you learn and you know more than me and then you can teach me at some point. You'll leave a comment and be like, hey, Chris, you're doing this wrong. I figured this out on blah, 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 whatever site. And like, you know, I, I always appreciate feedback and, and the potential to learn more things about stuff that I'm very passionate about, you know. And anyways, blah, blah, blah. Bye bye. Take care. Adios for now. Bye bye.